Ooh, uh, party people. This is the DevConf 14 OpenPGP key signing party. So um, I, I'm DKG. This is Anibal. Um, I want to welcome everybody here. We're going to be passing around uh, two decks of cards. They're going to each deck needs to go across the entire room. You'll get um, you'll get a deck coming in a different direction. Make sure you get the top blue card that when the deck hits you, and the top red card when the deck hits you. I'll explain what's going on with that later. Um, just make sure that you pass it so that everybody manages to get one of each card. What do I need to do to break the system? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You, it's okay if people know what your card is. You don't have to hide the card. And I'm not going to do any sort of magic trick guessing thing. Everybody check that you still have your watch off. So. So, um, okay, so we're going to start with a little overview about what we're doing here um, and why we're doing it and then a little bit of technical detail, and then we'll go ahead with the actual program. Um, you so are going to read the hash at some point, right? Yes, we are going to read the hash at some point. So, uh, so I, I recognize that there are some people who are here who have done key signing parties many, many times before, and I suspect that there are some people here who have never done a key signing party ever. So, um, so there's going to be some explanation, and it's, uh, I want to encourage people to ask questions if you're not sure why something is useful or why someone, something might, might happen. I don't think we have time to go into all of the possibilities about what could be done um, or sp specific tools to use for every single thing. But uh, question. Yes, I will speak more slowly. Um, we also have a microphone. We have a microphone for the people with questions in the audience, I think. Um, and Anibal has it. So if you, if you want to ask a question, uh, please raise your hand and wait until you get the microphone to ask the question. Why are we taking a card and passing the rest down? Uh, we'll get to that. I promise. OK. So, so primarily what we're trying to do here is to meet each other and to establish connections with each other so that we can continue to have those connections in a secure fashion over the internet in the future. We're establishing uh, the identity of other people who work on the project, getting to know who they are, and making sure that we have a way, a, a secure way that we can communicate offline. So we're bootstrapping the offline communication from this, uh, um, the online communication from this offline meetup. So that's the purpose of a key signing party. Um, so many of the people who are here probably sent an email to Anibal with their key and asked for it to be included in the key signing party. And that's great if you did that. With the public part of your key, yes, not the private part. <laughs> um, some, I'm sure that there are several people here, if not many people here, who did not get an email to Anibal. And that's also OK. So, there are some things that are going to be more convenient for the people who have sent their key to Anibal earlier. Um, but if you did not bring, if you did not do that, you can still participate. It'll just be a little bit less convenient for you. So, so yeah. Sorry. There are there are for people who came in late. There are two decks of cards going around, a blue deck and a red deck, and everyone should get the top card from each deck when it passes. So make sure you have a blue card and a red card. We'll get to that. So, so part of meeting people is knowing who people are. There are some open seats up here if the lurkers in the back want to come sit down. But part of it is, the, the cryptographic part is that we want to verify people's fingerprints. Um, so the fingerprint is a marker for your public key. Um, it is very difficult to forge a fingerprint that matches your fingerprint. Um, and normally if you're doing pairwise fingerprint uh, verification, then both parties have to read to each other a relatively long string of hexadecimal characters and verify that from the other person. That's kind of a boring task. We're also not very good at it as humans. So 
the sending the keys earlier, we'll, we're going we're gonna to avoid having to do that many pairwise fingerprint matches by, as a group, we're going to take a list of all of the fingerprints that everybody has submitted, and we're going to collectively verify that we all got that same list, and that way when you meet someone whose key was on that list, you'll be able to go, uh, you'll be able to say to that person, oh, I had the same fingerprint hash that you did uh, when, I, when we looked at the big list, and my key was number 28. And then you can look at the list and you say, oh, it's number 28, and now you've got the file, you've got the fingerprint, you can just work with that. So it's, the advantage is that everybody verifies one big fingerprint, and then we can work with, the tool, with, with our tools to do the um, signing afterwards. Does that make sense as to why the process is set up that way? If you did not, so, right, so the steps I have here is everyone has the, the big list, um, and if you don't have it yet, you can fetch it from there, um, which may or may not be men in the middle. Um, and then we're going to take a digest of the, of the big list, and then we're going to... So we'll compare the digest. <laughs> um, and the other thing, no, no, not those. They've run out of red cards. Wow. All right. Uh-oh. Really? How many people do? Well, no, because this is gonna, that's going to put everybody in the, same, in the same boat here. All right. So if you, if you didn't get a card, then, um, then, then look at your neighbor to your left and note their red card, and look at your neighbor to your right and note their blue card. And that's yours. I have the last blue card, so these two rows do not have a blue card. Um, <laughs> Sorry, initially when everyone was here at the start of the talk, there were less than 80 people in the room, and now there are more than 80 people in the room, and I apologize that I, that I didn't expect so many people to come in after the talk started. If you came in after the talk started, you're going to, get, you're going to choose randomly about the cards later, okay? Sorry. It doesn't work to give out these cards now. <laughs> Not if you don't have a card. So the critical thing here is that when you look at this list, it's not just about having the group consensus about what the digest is um, on that list. You also have to verify that your fingerprint on that list is your fingerprint. So if we all agree on the collective digest, but your fingerprint has changed, Anibal was the one who made the list, and then it got transmitted over clear text HTTP, Make sure that your fingerprint is the right one. If you're not in the list, and I'm sure many people aren't, make sure you've got copies, physical copies of your fingerprint. When we're doing these key signings, you're not going to be reading your full fingerprint to all of your neighbors. So if you have a physical copy that you can hand to your neighbor when you're in the process of doing the verification, that way they've got a copy of it and they can do whatever they want with it. So I want to emphasize here, the fingerprints are for crypto, the goal of all of this is to meet other people in Debian so that you can keep in touch with them and do stuff with them later. <laughs> Work on projects. <laughs> so, so, um, so uh, do the people who are, so you can also participate without verifying the, the fingerprint of the, of the file and you're just not going to be able to correctly verify people's fingerprints. So, uh, in which case, you probably should not be signing their keys. Um, well, I mean, you can verify the individual fingerprint, right? You can verify yeah. the individual fingerprint, but you're, you, I don't want people to have to be doing that during the group key okay, signing. Sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, sorry, you want the URL there? Yeah. There you go. So that's deb.ly, KSP, key signing party, debcomp14, so KSPDC14. Oh, there's way more opportunities than two. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is a brown broken proxy. <laughs> so, so I want to make sure that every. So I want I want to get around to just we're we're going to get out of the way the group verification of the um, of the fingerprint of the whole file. Um, 
And so I want to make sure that everyone who is going to be verifying the fingerprint of the whole file uh, is prepared to do that. So is, if anyone who is planning on verifying this and is not prepared to verify the fingerprint, uh, please raise your hand. OK. So if you have the fingerprint in front of you, raise your hand. OK. So another option for some people, if you want, is to make a note of the finger. If you don't have it, if you're not one of the folks who have it in front of you, you can write down the fingerprint that we are all going to consensus on shortly. And then you can later fetch the file and try to verify the fingerprint that way. So yes, you'll need to have an exact copy of the file. It is now. So sure, the URL is deb.ly slash kspdc14. That was a random U URL string that it gave me from the URL shortener. <laughs> but I was using dual ECDRBG. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so uh, I just put the um, the finger the SHA two fifty six sum of the of the key signing party list up there, and I'm going to read it out loud. Um, so it is uh, four foxtrot four seven five eight one two echo five two bravo thanks nine seven eight alpha bravo foxtrot echo eight zero bravo nine seven bravo five bravo alpha Echo nine six eight nine echo five three six bravo seven delta three seven four alpha four three nine eight six foxtrot charlie zero alpha five two three foxtrot bravo five alpha foxtrot nine one charlie. Does, does, does anyone have a different fingerprint? No, I am not. I'm only going to read out the, the, um, the, this one file. This is the canonical file. I don't think we should have separate versions that are multiple, not quite canonical files. So... So there, there's, there's some discussion here about what, for people who are listening remotely and don't have the microphone access, there's discussion about whether we're going to verify another file's fingerprint. And I want to minimize the amount of fingerprint verification because that's not the point here. The fingerprint verification, the goal is to make sure we have a cryptographic link. This is sufficient to have this cryptographic link, and I don't think we should do more. The question is, is anyone going to use the condensed file? No, I'm using it because I printed it. It is not valid to use that for verifying some of the integrity because it generates the condensed file. Can you bring the microphone closer? That file is missing the key length. Can you bring the microphone closer? That file is missing the key length. Yeah, it doesn't matter for the length. You can compare the fingerprint later. So there's some discussion about which files are acceptable to use. The, the, the canonical version is this kspdc14.txt, not the compressed one. Borland, did you want to repeat that? So the issue I'm pointing out is that, at the very least, I remember off the top of my head, the condensed file does not list the key lengths of the, of the, of the keys. So verifying that checksum doesn't give you the same cryptographic assurance and should not be used. And also, I'm not checking that file, so you'll just have to use the real one. Can you hand Sam the mic, please? So, OK, this is, speaking with I was one of the reviewers for the latest round of the OpenPGP spec when it was approved. It is my understanding that a modern key, and I'd have to go back and look this up, we got to a point where you, all you needed was the fingerprint. I believe that's correct. But it is absolutely true for DSA keys, and especially for PGP1 keys, that is not true. Yeah. PGP V3 keys do not, the fingerprint does not encode the length. Yes, we do. In this security 
there are DSA keys in the key ring. Why? Um, we, we, I'm not, I don't want to get into the cryptographic details right now. I want to get on with, the, with meeting each other, because I think that's the point. Also, but, I am not verifying any fingerprints that are mine, except in that file. So yes. if you were trying to verify some other file, I am not assuring you that your copy of my fingerprint is valid. You must verify that fingerprint to be assured that my fingerprint is valid. OK. So a couple of points here. No one is under any obligation to sign any key, right? You don't have to sign every key of every person that you meet at this key signing party, um, even if you say that you do, the, even if you say that you plan to. And if someone decides to not sign your key or if someone is lazy and forgets about it, you can ping them if you want, but it's okay if they don't want to sign your key. You know, we, we would be happy to have people meet each other and certify each other's identities, but it's okay if, that's not what, if somebody doesn't si want to sign. So, Traditionally, with key signing parties, uh, people have asked to, uh, you know, we ask people to bring some form of identification. Um, so what kind of ID is okay? I want to point out that the bottom point here is the critical part, which is that different people have different standards. At Debian, we really want to make sure that we know who each other is. But there are some people here whose government-issued IDs don't match their actual identities, um, depending on what you consider to be actual. Um, some people here have identities, uh, have identity papers that are not international, uh, not internationally valid, like a local driver's license. Um, some people have just this as their identity, um, and it's up to the person who's doing the certification to decide what kind of ID is sufficient and how many IDs they need to get. So I just wanted to point that out, and this is again up to the person who's doing the certifying. And. One more point here for folks who have not participated in a, in a key signing party before. We are not actually signing keys at the key signing party. We are taking notes. And you will use those notes later to certify whichever keys you decide you want to. But we are not going to do any key certification in this room. I mean, maybe some people will because they're crazy. But the point here <laughs> is to not actually do the key certifying right now. Make notes so that you know what the keys are that you are going to certify. And then you can go do that whenever you want. And different people take notes in different ways. One of the reasons to argue for printing out the sheet is that it's easy to take notes on the sheet with a pen. And when you meet someone face to face, it's nice to have a piece of paper and a pen. It doesn't feel quite as alienating as a computer. Other people prefer to take notes on the computer. They can, they can process them more easily that way. And you know, different people have different note taking styles. So, so um, the way that we're going um, to, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, with Anibal um, the way that we would use, uh, the way that we would do this, uh, because people who are here have not done this pro process before. So, okay, so I'm going to say, um, I'm Daniel Khan Gilmore. Uh, my email address is dkg at um, And I have verified the fingerprint that we all agreed on here. And I have checked the file. And my fingerprint is correct in there. And I'm number 28. So I would say this to Anibal. And he would look at his notes. And yeah, did you check the hash? I did check the hash of the file. Good. And here's my ID. It's a New York State driver's license. I also have this, which doesn't have my middle name on it, <laughs> and I have, um, I have my uh, healthcare card, and I probably have something that I wrote in crayon somewhere else. Okay. So now it's up to him to decide whether or not he thinks that is a sufficient identification. What do you think? I want to see credit card. Yeah. So my number is 28. I would so, trust them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to check his name. Put his name on the list. Take the microphone. Hold the microphone. Twenty-eight. Fingerprint. You said. I've you checked, checked them. I've checked my fingerprint and I've checked the fingerprint of the file. Your ID is okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. So I would like I would like to get my ID back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did. 
So let me say that again because, because Zobel thinks that I didn't say it. I checked the fingerprint of the file, and I looked at the file, and I checked that my fingerprint is correct in the file, and I am number 28. That was the first thing that I said, yes. So there's a hand, Manaj has a hand there. Would it be faster to have us uh, go around and say things like, I'm number 66, I checked the uh, no. check some of the file so, so, and... So the answer is yes, it would be faster, but people would not be able to verify whatever identity documents you present. So the identity can be then checked Separate. separately. Well, if you're checking the identity separately, at that point, you can also say to the person, I checked, I'm in the file, I've checked my fingerprint in the file, and I'm number eight. If you're doing that separately, which I encourage you to do after the KSP. Wait. Okay? So does this, does this process make sense to people? Yes. Any other questions? So, we'll get to the cards, come on, come on folks. So, after the KSP, after the KSP, you will process your notes. You're going you're gonna to certify the people's keys who you decided to certify. I recommend emailing your, your signatures to the people because that's a way to verify their email address, right? If I said, hi, my name is Daniel Con Gilmore, my email address is president at whitehouse.gov, you probably don't want to certify that because you can recognize that that's probably not my email address. But you can't tell really with other ones. And so if you email your signatures to the person who you signed, then, th then you're verifying that at least they have some way to read that email. So, yes, so there's a tool called CAF from Key Signing Party that automates that, and I recommend checking it out. There's also a tool, sorry, Signing Party. Don't, don't believe what you see up here. I'm not gonna change it right now. <laughs> and so there's Signing Party and Monkey Sign and uh, Pius that all offer that. I recommend CAF at the moment. I'm hoping to recommend Monkey Sign in the future. Are these, slide, are these slides available online? Uh, they're not right now, but I'll put them online. Was there? <laughs> so, sorry, there's a bunch of people asking questions, and I'd like to, to have one conversation until we can get to the key signing. If you receive emails from people that are using CAF, I think it's important to note that um, that's the signature, and then you need to, to upload that to the server. Um, right. Otherwise, it won't be public. So the email that will, if you want it to the be, the email that will be sent via via CAF will be a message text with the signed key attached, all of that encrypted, and then mailed to you. And so when you receive it, you'll need to decrypt the email, say, extract the attachment, import that into your PGP keyring using probably GPG import or whatever tools you have available, and then if you want that signature to be visible to the rest of the world, you'll then need to send your key to the public key servers. Tom? Yeah, I just wanted, I was trying to find a, the correct bug number here, and I'm not finding it at the moment, but uh, I wanted to just remind people that there is uh, a little bit of a confusing configuration step for CAF. Uh, it has its own directory for GPG configuration, and it's kind of important before you actually start signing keys to make sure that, the, among other things, the signature strength is set sufficiently high, like SHA-256 or better, in that file. Um, I'd be glad to answer anyone's questions about how to do that, if anyone has any questions about that. Uh, and also, just to follow up on the, on the comment that Taggart had mentioned earlier, uh, I think it's generally polite to let people upload their own uh, signatures. Um, I. I like to be the one to upload my own signatures because often if, if you send me a SHA-1 signed uh, key, I will probably politely ask you to re-sign it and then I'll upload your strong signature to the key servers. Thank you. I think those are good recommendations. So are we ready to learn what the cards are for? Okay, so everyone has a red card and a blue card, except for the folks who came in late. That's not <laughs> Okay, so when it, so the red, you're going to have <coughs> zero or one red cards and zero or one blue cards. And when I say your red card and you don't have a red card, you get to pick a number from one to ten. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to split into groups. We're going to split into 10 groups, and the groups are going to be based on the number that you have on the card. 
and when you pick a number, you'll just go to the group with that number. And the groups are good. And so the goal here, we're going to do this twice. We're going to do it once with the red cards and then once with the blue cards. And in each group, you'll get to meet a small handful of other Debian folks. And you can, within that group, exchange, you, you can, uh, you'll take turns introducing yourself to everyone who's in the group and, sh and passing around your ID for them to look at. And then we'll, so we're going to do that for about uh, 10 minutes. And then we're going to switch and we'll do the blue card groups. And the goal of this is we're not trying to get everyone to certify everyone else's key. The goal is to have a bunch of people who have signed. We're, it's going to create sort of a mesh of, of certifications. And it's going to give you a better chance to actually know something about the person whose keys you're signing. So in addition to doing this, you can also meet any, anyone during the rest of the conference. And while you're talking to them, say, hey, I missed you at the key signing party, but, um, and then have the same exchange and actually have a real conversation with a little bit more time to do so. OK? So, um, so we're going to do ace two, I guess, uh, let's do ace two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doesn't matter. No. Oh, sorry. Red card first, but we're not, it's not about whether it's red versus black on the suit. Okay. Right. So, so look at your card. Look at your red card. And one, two, three. Oh, sorry. Ace two three, four five six, seven eight nine ten. And when you're in your group, you're gonna when you're introducing yourself, you're gonna say your name. You're gonna show your ID documents. You're going to say whether you confirmed your own fingerprint in the file. And you're also, OK, can everybody, ha ha can, can I just say uh, one more thing? So in addition to saying, in addition to, to the, the, the critical pieces here, you are also going to say in one sentence, and everybody else in the group, keep people honest, one sentence, what do you do for Debian? One sentence. And then you're also going to say, what is your favorite food? <laughs> yeah. So we didn't get cards either. <laughs> I don't need. I, I don't know why you guys blocked to me. I didn't block to you. Because you were told you were